Now, today marks the fifth anniversary of a day that will stick in the minds of those of us who live and work here in Paris for many, many years to come. It is the fifth anniversary of the Charlie Hebdo attacks here in the city as two brothers, Said and Sheriff Kouachi, forced their way into the offices of the French satirical weekly magazine and killed 12 people. Now, there followed over the next few days several other related attacks, including that at a kosher supermarket in Paris, where 19 people were held hostage and four murdered. The gunmen and the network behind the attacks, all Islamist terrorists who picked on Charlie Hebdo as a target, angered by its satirical take on religion and its depiction of Mohammed. Well, joining us now is a French-British-Australian cartoonist who's a member of the uh, Cartooning for Peace Foundation. He now lives in Brussels, where he works for several Belgian and French publications. Nicolas Vado, thanks very much for being with us on the programme today. I mean, how shocked were you at the time um, when the Charlie Hebdo attacks happened? Well, I couldn't really believe it, and I still can't really believe that people can be killed just for doing little cartoons. So it was really a, a huge surprise. And um, I think five years after that, uh, what has changed the most is that should this happen again today, I doubt that there would be uh, millions of people demonstrating on the street. Why do you say that? Because this, the um, society is more divided than it used to be. Uh, social networks help dividing society. And uh, I don't think this sort of coming together that came after the attacks uh, would happen again. And that's unfortunate. So I think our response to that has always been since the attack. And even uh, until today, it's all about education. So we have to go to schools, we have to talk with young people, talk about freedom of speech, talk about the right uh, to blaspheme and the right to live in a free society because freedom of speech is the first freedom of all. Uh, well, I mean, there are, of course, people who, uh, hearing you say that, will say that um, cartoonists generally, uh, you know, they perhaps aren't as sensitive as they, as they could be, and that some, some people also have a nasty way, of perhaps, of, of picking on people or cultures. I mean, how do you defend that, and why do you think it's important that cartoonists should be able to do what they do? Uh, because, for instance, religion is a belief. Religion is not the truth. Religion is a belief. So you have to be able to discuss any beliefs. That's not because you discuss them that you don't respect them. So that's really important. Otherwise, if we give up on that, uh, who knows where we, where we might end up. So it's very, really important to realise that we live in a democracy. Uh, democracy is not there for good. Uh, can't be taken for granted and we have, to, we have to fight for it all the time. We are, uh, like many people say, canaries in the coal mine. You know, when the canary starts, uh, stops singing, uh, there's a problem ahead. And that's what cartoonists are about, I think. Is there a line, though? I mean, it, obviously, it's, if, if you think there is a line, it's very difficult to determine exactly where the line is. Or do you think there should be no line at all and anything is fair game? Um, the line is the law. That's pretty simple. It's pretty, pretty basic. So uh, the line is the law. In, um, in a society where freedom of speech exists, there are laws. You have to respect laws, full stop. Then uh, everyone has their own red lines, and one has to respect them. But I don't want people to impose me their own red lines. And if they don't like cartoons, they are not obliged to watch them. It's, it's not something that, cons that is compulsory. If you don't like the cartoon from Charlie Hebdo, if you don't like Charlie Hebdo, then don't read it. It's difficult, though, when, uh, you know, the, the, inevitably the front page of magazines like Charlie Hebdo is displayed all over the place on, on kiosks uh, around Paris, notably, the, uh, you know, we see that regularly, and, and on television programmes who are discussing cartoons. Yes, well, and, and, and I see pictures on the walls of Paris, uh, for instance, uh, during an election, I see uh, posters for Marine Le Pen. I hate Marine Le Pen, but they can show me the posters. It doesn't oblige me to vote for her. It's the same thing with Charlie Hebdo. In a free society, one has to respect others' belief, but one has to respect others' people's right not to believe. And you know, uh, taking those points that you've made, how easy is that um, to talk to with school children? I mean, you were mentioning the idea or, or the, the, your, 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 your point that actually it needs to come right at the beginning when people are at school to be educated in understanding um, that side of things. I mean, do, is it difficult to, to discuss that with children? 
It is, I wouldn't say it's difficult, it's challenging, but it's always fascinating. For instance, I was in a Belgian school a month or two ago, and a, a um, young girl, maybe 16, 17, pointed her finger and said, do you think that freedom is an opinion? So that's quite a philosophical statement, but that was really interesting. So, and, and it's funny that young people want to be listened to. They want to be heard. They want to be able to debate. And they feel that they don't have the right to debate. They, don't have, they feel they don't have the right to be shocked. They have the right to be shocked in a free society. So it's always interesting to actually meet them. And I always learn something when I spend an hour or two with them. And you're a member of this uh, cartooning for Peace Federation, something that was around before Charlie Hebdo uh, even happened. I mean, why, yeah. why is that so important and, and what do you think that, that can bring to society? Well, it's because we are about 200 um, cartoonists around the world and it's, it's really interesting to actually meet with them because we had a, a big gathering in Strasbourg two months ago and it was really interesting to hear their own experiences in their, in their own countries. There are um, cartoonists in Nicaragua, in Venezuela who had to flee the country because uh, their life was at stake. So it's really important for us who live in free society to realize how lucky we are. And for them it's important as well because they see that in, in different countries uh, we, can do, we can draw whatever we want. And for instance, I had lunch here in Brussels with Pedro Molina, who's from Nicaragua, and there was a demonstration, like always in the European district. See, oh, well, you see this demonstration? There are people demonstrating, and cops are not actually um, fighting against them. They're not actually targeting them. So for him, it was something which was not normal, which is normal for us. So it's always a very interesting experience to um, exchange point of views uh, with uh, people from other countries. And as we show uh, some of uh, your, your own artwork to the viewers, there's just one more question I want to ask you. I mean, five years on from Charlie Hebdo, has what happened actually changed what you draw, what any of your colleagues draw, do you think? My job hasn't changed at all. What has changed is the way people see us, but my job hasn't changed. Great to have you with us on the programme today. Thanks very much for joining us. That's Nicola Vedo uh, joining us Thank from Brussels much. there, from the uh, cartooning for Peace Foundation. Thanks a lot. And, of course, uh, we'll be bringing you coverage of those uh, attacks, the uh, fifth anniversary of the Charlie Hebdo attacks during the day here on France 24.